All right, so on an unrelated note to today's video, in the prior video uploaded on the channel, the Alexander Georgiev Igor Shashurkin frustration thing, I did note that Georgiev has been a very contributing member on my fantasy team. In today's video, we're going over a guy who I added onto my team this week because Tyler Bertuzzi was out with a long-term injury, and he has himself a teammate on the Flames, or not a teammate, a proposed line mate on the Flames that is also on my fantasy team too in Nazem Kadri. Today we're going over to Philly, and we're talking about Travis Konechny. The reason Philadelphia is in the news is because this is a team that a lot of people were kind of projecting towards being somewhat of a bottom feeder heading into 2022-2023. They kind of threw everybody for a shock because they won the first few games they had on the year, including a win against the Tampa Bay Lightning, but after losing two of their last three and having another game later tomorrow against Florida, it's going to be interesting to see where the Flyers end up going. How's that for John Tortorella saying that he sees nothing redeeming about this team and nothing that you can build upon heading into the year only to start out 3-2-0 or something like that? Either way, Travis Konechny is our conversation here today because when it comes to the Flyers and what they might want to do in some sort of a retooling, a guy like Konechny has indeed been thrown around as a potential option. Now, this isn't really something that's confirmed. Oh, he's going to get traded in the same way that we were so sure that Eichel was getting traded or that a guy like Jacob Chitrin is going to get traded. No, it's not really like that. It's just kind of speculation as to whom the Flyers might want to unload heading into the next few years of getting younger and rebuilding on the fly. Konechny is a 25-year-old forward. He's a right-wing, left-wing, a right-handed guy, 5'10", 174, making $5.5 million a season till the end of 2025. He has a pretty good contract, especially for what he's been able to accomplish so far with Philadelphia in the time that he has spent since 2016-17. He was drafted out of the Ottawa 67 system, where he was touted as a two-way caliber center with some really good intangibles, also some really good scoring ability as well. It's even noted here in the scouting report back from 2014. He is a talented scoring forward that can play either as a center or on the wing, and he plays with the bite and intensity of a guy who is willing to do anything to win a game. He possesses dynamic skating ability that allows him to accelerate rapidly with each step, incredible hockey sense, electrifying puck handling skills, and a lightning release on his shot. When you put this skill set together with the hard-nosed determination he has, proactiveness in all three zones, and a physical willingness to grind and persevere, you get a game-changer who can be extremely difficult to play against. He also happens to be second cousins with Bo Horvat, which is cool. Travis Konechny has rounded himself out as one of the better forwards on this Philadelphia Flyers team, capped off by a 61-point season and 66 games played back in 2019-20. This was the year heading into the bubble playoffs where a lot of people said the Flyers were going to be the team to beat in the bubble. They ended up losing in the second round, unfortunately. But ever since then, Philadelphia has kind of gone down the drain when it comes to the caliber of quality on their roster. Konechny is still pretty good, though, with six points, four goals, and two assists in the six games played that he has this season. Hopefully, he continues the point-per-game pace because my fantasy team could very much use it. This is why we talk about the idea of trading Konechny away, because this player is a legitimately good player, and he's signed to a good contract till the end of 2025. If you're going to go out there and say that the Flyers need to rebuild, they need to go younger, they need to get even further down the pipeline than Konechny is because he's 25, you want to get guys that are, let's say, 18, 19, 20. If you want to go that route with Philadelphia, a guy like Konechny wouldn't be too bad of an option if you wanted to trade him away. You're probably going to be able to get yourself a good, significant haul in return, which is why there's been discussion amongst other teams' fan bases on social media as to whether or not Konechny could be the guy for their club. Like this tweet right here from Mike Gold. He writes for DailyFaceOff.com. He tweeted this, Travis Konechny already makes Calgary his home during the offseason. He's under contract for the next three seasons at 5.5. I think he'd be the perfect fit on a line with Nazem Kadri. There are a few replies that are noteworthy. Brandon asks, you gotta load off money if you wanna trade for Konechny. Do you think Nikita Zadorov is the trade-off there? Mike says, not for this season. He would fit under the cap without having to make any subtractions if he's acquired near the trade deadline. John asks, where would you put Mangiapane? Who would you trade to get him? Lucic? Gold goes out there and says he'd have a line of Mangiapane, Kadri, and Konechny all together, and... That sounds like a pretty good second line if you ask me. 
Now, of course, I won't say that it's not problematic, assuming that other teams that have gotten off to good starts are going to want to trade away all their star players right off the bat. But at the same time, you kind of have to round out where this season is going to go. Because Philadelphia, I mean, they have been off to a great start, that's true. But I'm kind of questioning whether or not that great start and the point percentage that they're at is going to sustain over the course of 82 games. Heck, even just 60, 65 games towards the trade deadline. We'll see where things go by the time March, April, and May rolls around, but at the same time, it is an interesting conversation to highlight where exactly the Flyers could go if they did indeed wanted to explore a trade for Konechny. This isn't the first time, actually, that Konechny has been suggested in a trade to the Flames. If you go over and just search the two words together, Konechny and Flames on Google, you'll find some other pieces written on other platforms over the years discussing as to whether or not this guy would be a pretty good fit. And pretty much when it comes to return, there had been a lot of people speculating that if Konechny does get moved, because he is not a rental option, this guy expires in three years, 2025, rather than at the end of 2023, there would probably be a little bit more of a price tag there than if he was just a pure straight up rental who was expiring in the summer. This guy might go out there and demand a first round pick and maybe a top prospect from whichever team he's getting sent over to. For Calgary, this could be pretty similar to something like the Tyler Toffoli trade just with a younger player who is not named Tyler Toffoli. I think a lot of Flames fans acknowledge that their timeline for success isn't necessarily all too rooted in the future and a lot of it is focused on the now, so who knows if a guy like Jakob Pelche, for example, is indeed on the trade block or a guy like Coronado might be. There's a lot of Philadelphia love to go around for some of these prospects, and if you wanted to make a trade for a guy like Konechny, I'd have no doubt that Philly would be asking for something like that in return. But at the end of the day, it really depends on whether or not you, as a Calgary Flames fan, would want to do this type of deal. You can let me know in the comments all your thoughts about trading away, let's say, a late first, because, you know, the Calgary Flames are going to go pretty far in the playoffs, alongside of, let's just say, a Coronado, because maybe Azari doesn't get it done. For a few years of Travis Konechny, who is in his prime, he's already a poised point-per-game player right now, at the very least. He could very well trail off and end the season off with 40-something points. It's possible, but, I mean... You would like to see him produce at the same way that he did in 2019-20, where he was just barely under a point per game for 66 games on the year. But he plays the right way, he can shoot, he can score, he gets under people's skin as well. He is a very nice all-around player that I've really much come to like over the past few years, not just because he's Bo Horvat's cousin, but because of all the other intangibles in his game. So if you're a Calgary Flames fan, what is the most that you would be willing to offer to get yourselves that final top six piece to play alongside of Kadri and Mangiapane on your second line like Travis Konechny? Is there a territory that you don't want to touch if you're talking about trade here? Okay, I like this guy, I want to trade for him, but Pelche? Nah, he's off the charts. I don't want to talk about Pelche getting traded. Or do you want to go out there and trade away a Pelche? Do you want to try to force things out with Connor Zari instead saying maybe, okay, how about a first and either a second or two thirds plus Connor Zari for a guy like Konechny? The Flyers, if you wanted to base everything off of their rationale back when they made the Giroux trade, it might do them good to just stockpile on picks and young prospects like Owen Tippett and the other stuff they had acquired from Florida. I get they started off pretty hot, but we'll see how things go by the time the trade deadline rolls around. But either way, talk to the console your thoughts about Travis Konechny heading over to Calgary. I hope you enjoyed this Vitaraj Rolls 99. And bye.